Hey everyone, it's June 2021 and Lightroom Classic just got an upgrade to version 13.3. Let's look at the new features right now. Hey Cafe Crew, Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. Let's jump into the new features inside of the June release of Lightroom Classic. Super Resolution is now here inside of Lightroom Classic. If you want to see more details, check out my review on Camera Raw where we really dug in and did comparisons. But let me show you right now. It enables you to quadruple the size of a photograph. So here's a photo that was shot on a Sony A7 S3, great camera, but it only has 12 megapixel sensor. So why don't we right click and then we're going to choose to enhance the image. The enhance is going to pop open. And now we have the option here to do super resolution. It tells me it's going to take about six seconds. If I hold it down, this shows what it looks like without enhance. And this shows what it looks like with. So let's do that right now. And you'll see on the top left, it's telling us it's creating an enhanced DNG. And let's put it in a stack because I chose that option. And we can see the stack there and we pop it open. Now, if we look at the file name, you'll see it says enhanced.dng. So if I just tap this over, there's the original photo. So it creates a brand new photo right next to it. And let's have a look and see what happens on the original. If I go into 100%, this is what we have on the original photo. Now, if I want to go to the enhanced version, notice it doubles the height and the width and essentially gives us an image that's four times larger. And the quality of this is actually really good. Check out my other video for more detail on this, where I went into it in depth in Camera Raw and showed you the comparisons with resizing in Photoshop, and you can really see the difference for yourself. The next new feature we're going to look at is this some new presets, some pro presets. If we choose Develop Module, so if you go on the left, you'll see there's a number of different categories. And if we choose these categories, we can see these different color presets and you can see these are really nice. I like the cinematic ones. I've got futuristic. Vintage. And let's have a look at some portrait images and see how some of these look. So these are set for different skin tones, deep, medium and light. This model has pretty light skin. So let's have a look and see how that's going to look. And we can see how those presets give us a different look right there on the images. Pretty cool. The next new feature is a live tethering on a Nikon is now here. They recently added it to Canon. I don't have a Nikon camera, but I have a Canon camera and I can show you exactly how it works. It works the same. Just now it works for Nikon as well. So we just go under file tethered capture and we're going to start the tethered capture. Give it a name. And all we need to do is switch that to live. Now we get the live view. And as I move the camera around, you guys can see there's the live view. All right, so we get the live view there. And of course, you know, we can capture photographs and do all that kind of fun stuff. Right there, changing settings on the camera. Notice that we can change our shutter speed, aperture, ISO, white balance. All of that is there. And of course, there's been some speed improvements across the board. But now when we talk about real speed improvement, now we're talking about the M1. And the big news is, yes, it now works on the M1 Mac in native format. All right. And here we are on the M1 MacBook Pro. And as you can see, it scrolls nicely. The performance is really amazing. So these are some photos I just imported into this machine. So I haven't uh, cached these yet. Let's double click and see how quickly this loads. So here's a photo right there. Let's click on it. We can zoom in nice and close. Al Capitan. And let's have a look in the develop module. So if we jump here into the develop module, we can see that this is very responsive. Let me just pop that open there.
and we can see it works just like butter. It works very well. It's hard to show the performance, but I'm going to do another video where we're going to dig deeper. Let me know if that's something you want to see where I actually do some speed comparisons. Now, one of the things is it doesn't work for tethering yet. So you're going to have to run it under Rosetta. Let me show you how to run it under Rosetta. You're going to go under the Lightroom Classic. You're going to right click and you're going to choose the options and show in Finder. So what this does is it shows its location. If you hit Control I or Command I for information, then it brings up our info and then we can choose open using Rosetta. So now we can force it to run in Rosetta and this will also enable us to use our plugins as well as do tethering in here. And you'll see now it's gonna be running in Rosetta mode. And another way you can tell if it's running in Rosetta or if it's running natively, you can see up the top here, it says Rosetta emulation mode on. So obviously it's gonna run slower here because what it's doing is it's emulating Intel mode. So it's gonna slow it down because Rosetta is just an emulator. So why don't we turn this off? And then when we turn that off and we relaunch Lightroom, we have to of course close it first, relaunch. Notice how much snappier it opens. You don't see that option there. And now it's running in native M1, which is much faster. And Adobe claims that the M1 native version of Lightroom Classic runs twice as fast as the Intel version. We'll do some tests and dig into that deeper and we'll find out. If you want me to do some in-depth tests on Lightroom Classic running on the M1 MacBook Pro, um, we can do some speed tests and comparisons and things like that. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. And also, what would you like to see it compared against? Um, so anyway, guys, that's what's new here inside of Lightroom Classic in the June 2021 release. I hope you found this useful. Let me know in your comments underneath. What are your favorite features? Do you think this is a good update? I'm very curious if you guys thought. And by the way, if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications and you won't miss any of my videos. And by the way, all the Apple announcements yesterday were great and exciting, but I'm a little disappointed that we're not able to run the desktop apps on the iPad. So I'm kind of hoping for Apple to be moving a little bit faster on some of that stuff. Um, just a little side note there, check out my other video when I'm talking about the iPad Pro versus the MacBook Pro uh, using the M1 because there's some interesting potential there. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. I don't have a Nikon Canon. I, I've 